Hi guys, it's Emilcy here, so welcome to another speed build. So today I am building another family home and also another farm build, but this time I am building here in Mount Como Ravi, which is of course the world that came in the Snowy Escape expansion pack. So this is a Japanese inspired world and I wanted to build a Japanese farm. And this time, I think this one's for my save file. I've been debating with myself whether or not I wanted this part of the world to be rural or not, or if I wanted it to be more like modern and updated because the sims team's vision originally was to have this area be the more modernized version and have the houses be updated and modern but i was kind of disappointed that this part wasn't more like just like a countryside of the world i thought that would have been perfect to have like japanese like farmlands and just like i think i thought that would be really pretty i do like the landscaping and like the, the environment in this world in general i think is really pretty and it's one of my favorite worlds to build in and it's becoming more and more my favorite like the more and more that i build in here um and i just i really enjoy building here uh but yeah i was i was hoping that if we got a Japanese themed world, it would have a countryside to it. And so I'm thinking about just turning this side into the country because once I built this house, I think it actually fits in here really nicely. And I think you can go either way, have modern builds or country builds that are more rustic like this one and they fit in really nicely. So let me know if you guys agree. Let me know if you guys like this build. I hope you do because honestly, I might have a new favorite build. I know the last like larger farm that I did I said was my favorite build or at least up there because I, I've built a lot of things so it is hard to say which one is my absolute favorite and I think I would have different categories when it came to like coming up with my favorites like different reasons for having a favorite if you guys know what I mean uh, but I love this build so much and I've been very excited to share it with you so I'm hoping you guys are gonna like it as much as I am and I don't know I just I did a lot of things on this lot that I'm really proud of like the landscaping and the interior design the interior I especially struggled with I actually did another attempt that you won't see on screen but I didn't like it, so I redid it. <laughs> so um, I'm actually really happy with my second attempt. And um, something that I did that was really interesting on this lot, well, first off, there's um, a garden because I mean, this is a farm and I wanted there to be a garden. And I used the oversized vegetables. Of course, you could have regular vegetables or fruits or berries or uh, herbs or flowers or whatever you would like, but I decided to plant the oversized vegetables, but that's an easy fix if you want to change it. Um, and then I also included some chickens. There's a garden shed where I put the washer and dryer because I thought that would be kind of nice to have the washer and dryer outside of the house. Um, I thought that would make it feel like a little bit older. I did think for a moment about putting a washing machine in the kitchen and then having a clothesline outside, but I didn't end up doing that, but that's something you could also do. It's um, definitely a possibility. Um, but then another thing that I did is I used the cow shed or the llama shed. I decided to spawn a cow, but you could easily have a llama too if you prefer, but I wanted this to be more like a farm. And so I figured collecting milk felt more farm-like than just harvesting wool. But I mean, you could totally do that too. Both animals are awesome. <laughs> but, um, uh, so as you guys are probably thinking, the animal shed that came with Cottage Living does not suit this build at all. But thankfully, I have learned a trick. I watched an amazing tutorial and you guys, if you, if you enjoy building and want to make the animal sheds more versatile, I highly recommend that you check it out. I will link it in the description. It's a tutorial by um, uh, Sadie Sim, I think is how you say their channel name, but I highly recommend that you guys check it out. It is so useful. And honestly, I need more tutorials like it because I want to use the tool mod more. I've used it a little bit recently just to kind of fix things in my builds that I want to be different or basically just use it as a tool for decorating a little bit easier but I've done it off camera because I'm not super confident in my tool using skills and I'm just not that comfortable with the mod in general even though I want to be I I've actually used it quite a bit in the past but I, I don't know I need more tutorials so if you guys know of any good like tool mod tutorials please let me know because I need to learn more tips and tricks but this one by Sadie is it's so good and the animal shed actually it all you have to do is size it down using the tool mod and then hide it in a bucket. And there's a few tricks to getting it to function properly, like using the basement uh, and raise the decorations up so they're not blocking the animal shed. But it works so good. Watch the tutorial. <laughs> it's such a good tutorial. Um, but I was really happy that that was a possibility because that was one of the first things that I thought of when the Cottage Living pack was released. I'm like, oh, I love the animal shed for cottage living, but not for doing any other types of farms. Like I can't imagine using that in 
like a farm like this one or like in a more like American style farm, it wouldn't really work. And so I'm really happy that that's a possibility because I thought of it and I tried coming up with something that would function myself, but I couldn't get it to work. And so I'm so happy that Sadie came up with this because it looks really good. So check out the description um, if you guys are interested in watching that tutorial, but yeah, highly recommend it. If you guys like to build or if you want to use the animal shed on any other sort of environment, because I really think there's a lot of different possibilities. But here you can see I'm working out the shape of the house. It kind of took me a little while to get it to come together. I was actually really inspired by a painting that I found on Pinterest. So the left side of the house, where it has like the two different little like shed rooms that was pretty much just taken from that painting so i'm not sure who the artist is at this moment but when i put the picture up on screen i will also put their name because they're an amazing artist and their painting was so inspiring to me and it just inspired this whole build so i'm so thankful because i really want to build something like this but i'm not sure if i would have been creative enough if i didn't like see that painting because it was just so beautiful <laughs> like so dreamy uh, but over here i created a little balcony using some debug objects i used these wooden posts and the wooden fence that came from i believe the wooden fence came from eco lifestyle but i think there's a base game option that looks just like it i just didn't find it i found the eco lifestyle one because i knew it existed but i'm not sure if there's a base game one but either way i thought that looked really nice as a nice little balcony and i tried to make this look as japanese as possible i've never been to japan and i really know nothing about like japanese architecture in general but i look at pinterest a lot and i try to get a lot of ideas from pinterest and i try to i don't know look at a lot of different images to get an idea of what i'm doing so even though i was looking at that one painting it really only gave me an idea of how to build the left side of the house or at least part of it um, but the rest of it's made up and so hopefully if you guys know anything about japanese architecture you will think that i at least did it justice or you can see the effort that i tried to make i don't know i always kind of am intimidated when it comes to doing these types of builds because they're so different to anything that i've ever seen in real life and I, I don't know. I like, I want to do a good job. So hopefully I did. Um, something that I know is common in Japanese homes is a separated bathrooms to have a separate room for like the bathtub and shower and then a separate room for the toilet. I really find that kind of difficult to do in the Sims. I know a lot of people make it work with their floor plans, but I never have enough space where I end up putting my bathrooms to really make it function without being like totally like crowded and feel awkward. So I had a separate room for the toilet, but not the rest of the bathroom. Hopefully it doesn't bother you guys too much, but it is something I think about when it comes to trying to make a Japanese home feel authentic, but it just really isn't as possible for me, at least for me to like my floor plans as much as I do. Cause I usually really like my floor plans. Sometimes they're tricky and it's something that took me a long time to get comfortable doing. Floor plans was something that I struggled with for the longest time when I first started building in The Sims, but now it's one of my favorite things to figure out the different floor plans. And this one I actually end up really liking. Um, I really I really tried to make it feel authentic, like I said. I tried to make it feel open, and I really enjoyed using uh, the doors and the like windows and stuff that came in this pack. I think it'll look really pretty. And I love this area of the build, by the way. I want this to be more of like a courtyard, kind of like oasis. Um, more like peaceful area where your sims could like meditate if they wanted to I did put a couple of meditation stools in the little room Like leading to this area, but I didn't put any out here. I really didn't put any decorations besides this little uh, uh, Shrine thing and the statues and stuff. So it's pretty open, but I think it looks really pretty um, But over here, I'm trying to figure out where I want the soil beds to be I end up putting them over here and the cow shed will go on the far right I tried to add a pond but I I don't know, it was a little bit crowded and I couldn't really get it to, to look the way I wanted to. I really need to play around with terrain tools a lot more and play around with the pond tool a lot more. And I do think a build like this would be perfect with a pond, but I wanted to add other things more. So I wanted to have a garden more and I wanted to have a cow uh, shed more. And I also wanted to have a place for chickens more. And also this area too. This is one of my favorite areas of the build. I especially like the view from the inside to the outside, like where you can see the shrine and the tree and it's just like, a really pretty atmosphere and like honestly taking screenshots of this build has been one of my favorite builds to take screenshots of ever like I just want to take more screenshots of it <laughs> not really sure if I could take any different screenshots than I already did but I hope you guys will like them if you enjoy watching the screenshots I'm actually curious to know if you guys like watch all of the screenshots or is it only on certain builds 
because sometimes when I'm watching a speed build, I'm more like watching the speed building process rather than seeing screenshots at the end because a lot of people that do speed builds usually have screenshots. There's a few people that I watch that will have like only a couple of pictures or sometimes they won't have pictures at all. But um, yeah, I usually tend to like this, like watching the speed building process rather than the screenshots, but I like taking screenshots and I like putting them in my videos. So let me know if you guys like watching them. But anyways, here you can see I'm doing the amazing shed trick. So I use the tool mod and I size the shed down and I tried following her tutorial to a T. And so it works so good, you guys. I am unbelievably impressed by this tutorial. <laughs> like I am so thankful for it and just, yeah, please watch it. Sadie, you're amazing. If you happen to watch this ever, thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, all I had to do was size the shed down and then go into live mode to shift click to create a cow, just so you can see where the cow is standing. She explains all of this in the tutorial, but um, yeah, it's just, it's really easy. And then I also took the bucket from the cottage living pack to hide the hide the shed like she did um and i think she used the bucket because you can easily see the cow shed because you still need to be able to see it because you have to click on it to be able to interact with it because you need to clean the shed you need to uh, feed your cow and your sim can do all of these things it is amazing and i think the thing that makes this functional is because you use the basement and you raise the decorations like the archway and the bucket up from the basement. So you'll see me do that here uh, with the bucket. You already saw me do that with the archway and it's pure like genius. If the bucket doesn't suit your theme, you could really cover up the shed with anything. You'll just want it to be placed in a way that you can still see the shed to make it easier for yourself when you go to clean the shed and to feed your feed your cow and stuff like that. So, or your llama too. I always forget about the llama, but I like the, I like the llamas equally as I like the cow. But, um, anyway, so yeah, this is it. It's so cute. I adore it. Uh, it's so cute. I really, I had no idea how I wanted this little barn to look. I just wanted it to look rustic and to match the build. And so it's very simple, like when it comes to the shape of it, but I think it looks so cute and, here I'm having that fencing glitch too, by the way. <laughs> I think I left my game and came back into it and it was fixed. So I've had that issue a lot since Cottage Living was released. I'm hoping that it gets fixed in an update because it's one of the most frustrating glitches. I mean, thankfully it's not like impossible because it's an easy fix. Sometimes, or at least you used to be able to fix it by drawing a wall and then replacing the wall with a fence and then it'll be fixed. But um, if you just leave your game and come back into it, it'll fix itself. But it's just kind of frustrating and it doesn't look as cute while you're building. And I like the builds to look cute while you're building. Um, but over here, I'm adding different bushes and grass, a lot of plants that came from Snowy Escape, but some from base game. And then I also use some from Cottage Living, especially the little orange flowers and the grass. I love this grass in the debug menu. It is so good and I'm gonna use it all of the time. I especially like it when lining the fence just because it just, it looks like, you know, there's just grass growing and it's not as maintained. It's a little bit overgrown and just, I like the, um, I just like that extra detail. Um, but here I'm adding some hay bales, just some extra hay bales to have here in, um, in the pin. I thought about adding some in the actual main part of this shed over here, but it ends up being more of just like a storage shed rather than a barn. So yeah, I thought that worked kind of fine. Um, I wasn't too bothered by it, but over here I'm adding some debug plants and then just more, uh, or planters rather, and then some more just plants in general, kind of the same ones over and over. And I tried to make the terrain paint also look really natural and kind of rustic. I wanted it to feel like maybe it was a bit like muddy or something like that. I don't know, I really wanted this build to feel like lived in and kind of like an older home and not like updated. The interior ends up looking a little bit more modern than I had imagined, but I actually really like it because I didn't want it to feel like an outdated home like I wanted it to feel like it's in modern times but it's just an older home and it's been around for a long time but the family is a modern family and they buy new things <laughs> so I wanted it to have some new stuff so I ended up using the couch that came in this expansion pack I like the couch and I like the way it looks here but I'm I really wish if I could have made snowy escape like perfect in my eyes, I would have added another furniture set that was very old and traditional. I think that would have been really nice because it would have just made the pack a little bit more versatile. I like the furniture that came in it, but it's all very modern and newer looking. And I wish we would have got some that just looked older. Um, but over here, I'm adding some plants to 
uh, the chicken pen. I think that looks really nice, uh, but I'm, I'm done with that now because I keep rambling on. But here I'm just adding a few more plants in the front. And then I also add plants here around this courtyard area. I saved this area for last because I really wasn't sure how I wanted it to look. And I wasn't sure if I was going to add like other decorations, but I ended up just adding the same plants that I've been adding around the rest of the build and just tried to make it feel like it belonged here and it was natural feeling. But I just wanted it to feel very calm and peaceful in this area. And I tried looking at some inspiration, but I didn't really find anything uh, that I wanted to like model it after or anything. So I just kind of made it up and I think it looks really adorable. Um, but here I'm moving on to the interior. This floor plan was so challenging. <laughs> so it'll look like it comes together really easily because this was probably my like ninth attempt doing the floor plan. I honestly tried so many different layouts and so many different things and I just got so frustrated. Uh, that I ended up actually like leaving and taking a shower and then I think I s slept on the floor plan. Well, I decorated it the one way that I was talking about and then didn't like it. I didn't finish decorating, I only did part of it. Um, but then I slept on that and then redid it this morning and now I just am obsessed. <laughs> but something I was a little bit disappointed about was the second floor was a bit smaller than I had thought it was going to be. And so I only was able to fit two bedrooms up there. And so I really wanted to have another bedroom because I saw a larger family living here. So I was able to actually fit in a staircase leading to a basement level and I made a teenager's room down there. So I was really happy about that because I wanted this family to have two kids. And I did think about putting two beds in the child's bedroom that I ended up creating but I, I just felt like it would be way too cramped. I mean, you could easily do that. And of course we have bunk beds, those are things. So you could easily have bunk beds in there if you wanted to, you know, put two kids in there. But what I ended up doing is having a room for the parents, a room for a child, and then a room for a teen. So there's lots of different space. You could have four Sims in here. You could easily have five if you would like to. You could expand on the basement and have the rest of the relatives down there. You could have the grandparents down there if you wanted to. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. I'm really happy that I thought to add a basement to put, um, another room down there. Cause I don't think I would have been as happy as I am with this build if I didn't have another bedroom. Just because I wanted there to be a larger family is all. But here I did make this room a little bit bigger so I could fit um, just more kitchen space. Cause when I first decorated it, the kitchen was very tiny, which doesn't really bother me too much. But with smaller kitchens in The Sims, you can't add as much clutter because you need the counter space and things need to be functional. And I really wanted this home to have a lot of clutter. I wanted it to look like these Sims have lived here a long time. Like maybe their grandparents used to own this house and when they passed, they left it on to the family that lives here or something like that. So I wanted there to be a lot of detail, a lot of clutter and a small kitchen was just not gonna make that possible for me. But here I'm adding the basement level and the staircase leading to the basement and figuring out the floor plan. I just made a simple hallway leading to the room and then a small bedroom. Well, it's actually not that small. It's actually a pretty good sized bedroom. I make it a little bit smaller because I was like, this doesn't need to be like a suite down here. I wanted it to be a little bit smaller, but I wanted there to be enough space to have um, different activities and stuff. And I actually really like the way that room turns out. And I'm also using these beds that came from Eco Lifestyle. I believe they're just air up mattresses, but they looked more like a futon than like the other beds that we have in game. And from my understanding, I think Japanese people typically sleep on like futon beds rather than like a full bed with a bed, bed frame and everything. Let me know if that's correct. But um, from the other speed builds that I've seen that are Japanese themed, that's what I've heard people say. And from the interior pictures that I've looked at on Pinterest, that seems to be the case. Um, although I do really like the bed that came in this expansion pack, it would have been nice if they gave us a futon just because I mean, we already have plenty of beds that look like that, even though it is different, obviously the frame and the color options are different than our other beds, but the overall design of it, it's pretty much the same. But here you can see I'm working on the kitchen. So in this kitchen, I decided to use the refrigerator that came in Cottage Living because it felt like an older refrigerator and it made the home feel more rustic having a wooden refrigerator. I also used these counters and cabinets that came from the Country Kitchen kit because I thought they suited the theme and the idea that I was going for making it feel like an older home and I really like them in this build. I've kind of struggled using these uh, counters and cabinets, mostly because I don't like the curtains, and I know this is something that I've talked about in a lot of builds, but I just, I don't mind the curtains necessarily, but the color options drive me crazy. I wish that the curtains that came on, you know, this kitchen set and the ones that came from Cottage Living were all just like white, cream, or brown because the curtains are, sometimes they're white, cream, or brown, but other times they're bright yellow or pink, and 
it makes it so much harder to use them in more like realistic looking builds in my opinion so i find them kind of frustrating let me know if you guys agree but I'll try not to mention it every time I use them because I feel like I do <laughs> and so I just can't help it. But anyways, um, yeah, I decided to place that shelf that came from Snowy Escape over there by the dining table. I thought about using it for a moment here in the kitchen, but I didn't want to get rid of this window and there wasn't a great place to place it without getting rid of the window. And then I decided to use this cabinet that came from, I believe, Parenthood and I squished it in next to the refrigerator and I cover up the toilet paper with some jars that came from the Country Kitchen Kit uh, just to kind of hide them because I wanted it to look like storage but I didn't want it to feel like it was supposed to be in the bathroom and the toilet paper definitely makes it feel like it's supposed to be in the bathroom but these jars cover them up like perfectly so I think it looks so cute and I thought it was kind of interesting and yeah I thought it looked really nice but that's it for the kitchen I really adore it then over here is going to be the dining room so in the dining room I used this uh, katatsu table that came from uh, snowy escape. I forgot the name of it for a second. Uh, but in here, I also used the, uh, mats. I forget exactly what they're called, but I used that for the flooring. And as you guys probably saw when I was picking out the flooring and wallpaper, it took me a while to figure out the design. I wasn't looking at any actual designs of these floor mats from like real life. I just tried to make something that looked kind of interesting in the Sims. So I'm not sure if it's done properly. It's probably not, but I still thought it looked good. Um, but over here I have this side table. I used this side table that came from I believe it came from Island Living. I might be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it did. But I thought the style of it and like the shape of it suited this build and the style really nicely. Um, and I think the dining room just turns out really cute. I tried to add a lot of plants in this build. I didn't really see any of the Sims necessarily like being obsessed with like house plants or anything, but something that I've noticed in looking at a lot of interiors of Japanese homes, there's a lot of plants and I love it. I, I love having interior plants myself and so uh using them as decor is like one of my favorite things and so it's definitely something that i was happy to see in like my inspiration pictures but over here is going to be the living room i love the way i decorated the mantle it's one of my favorite spots of this entire build but this spot right here this view to the back courtyard is my favorite um but this is the couch that i ended up using i use this swatch because it's nice and neutral and it matched the build i would have liked probably to use one of the other options that have the patterns on the pillows but the colors weren't like I don't know suiting my taste I guess for the build so I just went with this one nice cream and brown and the rug came from City Living I thought that looked really nice and I also really liked using that TV um, I think the TV works really nicely for this style it came from Eco Lifestyle and it looks super cute um, and then on the coffee table I placed a incense holder a plant and a book um, and yeah, I just think it came together so nicely. And then over here is the way leading out to the courtyard. And so this was something that I was not sure how I wanted to decorate it. So I looked at a ton of inspiration and I found lots of different just pictures of these sort of rooms on Pinterest and yeah, came up with something that I thought looked nice. So hopefully you guys think it looks nice because I just, I love this space. I think it's so adorable. And I use uh, the bookcase that came with uh, Snowy Escape over here. And the plant and the pig statue are base game. They came from the Lunar New Year update, but I thought they actually worked really nicely in this style. And this statue came from City Living and I forgot about it. I was actually looking for something else that did not come from City Living and I found that statue and it worked perfectly in its place. I also have an art easel over there because I saw a picture of uh, a room that's like that from real life and somebody had a painting. Actually, it may have not been a real life painting or real life picture. It may have been like a, a drawing or something. I can't remember. I also see a lot of like anime images that are really inspiring, but um, in my mind, they're kind of a blur. So it could have came from something like that. I'm not sure, but um, if you're interested, I do have a Pinterest and you guys can follow it. It's just under Sinlessly, and I do have a board that's called Snowy Escape. And there's lots of different stuff on there. But uh, anyways, over here is the entryway. So something that you will see in Japanese homes that I've heard are sunken entryways. And so this was something that I could easily achieve in this build. Um, and not so easily the separate bathrooms. But thankfully I was able to add that. So it does make it feel a little bit more authentic having that. So I just added a few decorations in there. Just tried to keep it nice and simple and to feel like an entryway. But over here is going to be the bathroom. The bathroom is the only one in the build. I could have probably squeezed one in like the second floor or something, but I didn't think it was totally necessary. And also having one bathroom makes it feel like an older home to me. 
but if you feel like you desperately need another bathroom you could easily add one down here in the basement but i didn't think that that suited this build to have a basement level bathroom i mean it's, it's totally possible though it's the sims it doesn't really have to be that realistic but uh, that's just kind of how I felt. But down here, I felt like I wanted a little bit more to this hallway. So I put this little storage thing um, that came from Snowy Escape. Put that over here with a few decorations on it. And then here is going to be the teen's room. So this teen, I was trying to think of their personality as I was decorating their bedroom. And I think they are obsessed with snowboarding. They love everything about it. They live and die for snowboarding, basically, was my idea. And so, um, unfortunately, we don't have any like wall mounted snowboards to use as decoration. I would have loved that. We do have these wall mounted uh, skateboards, though, so that kind of filled in its place. Um, we do have actual like snowboards that you can put in your Sims inventory, but they don't snap to the wall. I wish we could like hang them on the wall. That would be really nice. I mean, the tool mod could make that possible. And I do place down a snowboard here in just a second on the floor. And my plan was to go in with the tool mod and make it look like it was hanging from the wall. But I don't know how to use the tool mod that well. And I could not get it to rotate in the proper direction. So I desperately need more tutorials. So please in the description, if you guys know of good tool mod tutorials, link them to me. <laughs> Or if you know how to use the tool mod really well, please make a tutorial and send it to me and I will watch it, please. <laughs> but um, anyways, uh, the room is coming together. There I just placed the snowboard. I do just imagine this teen has that snowboard in their inventory or maybe it's stored away in the closet over there. But I really like the way this room turned out. I think it's decorated really nice. I had like a lot of fun using the different decorations that came from Snowy Escape paired with like decorations from other packs. I think it just looks super cute. Um, but here moving on to the second floor. So this hallway, leading to the bedrooms is pretty simply decorated um I mean it's a hallway so I don't normally like overly decorate my hallways usually but um yeah I didn't think it was too necessary to add like a ton of decor there I realized that there was a side table that had a snowboard at the top but the room was already decorated for the teens so I ended up not using it but that would have been a good option to use as like a, a side table I guess I could have replaced the side table next to the bed, but I liked that one there, so I didn't end up doing it. But anyways, over here I have this base game side table with a couple of decorations on top of it. I ended up using uh, this fish tank that came with Snowy Escape. Um, I thought that looked kind of nice there and the shelf too with a few decorations on it. But over here is going to be the child's room. So for this room, I was thinking it's a little girl's room. Of course, um, you could switch it up. Uh, I mean, you could switch up the teen's room too. I did imagine the teenager was a boy and then this child was a girl, but that doesn't matter. But that's what I was imagining if you guys want to go with the Sims that I imagined. But in here, I tried to think of the Sims personality, but honestly, I was more just trying to decorate it in a way that I thought looked cute because I was kind of struggling. I really wanted to use this bed. It's an Arab mattress like the other beds that I was using. And so I was basically just trying to pick up decorations that I thought matched it. And so I ended up using this dresser. I think the dresser came from Cats and Dogs, but it came in a yellow option. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna use it in yellow and try to find decorations that actually, I don't know, go with the bed and the dresser. And I didn't want it to be like overly yellow. So I only used uh, those two things, but I used the uh, arts and crafts table that came from Snowy Escape. Um, I thought that actually looked really nice in here. And then a few of the um, posters and wall hangings and stuff. And I think this room is just absolutely it's absolutely adorable. And then I also used this little um, storage unit that came from Dream Home Decorator. I thought that looked pretty cute in here. And then I cluttered up the side table with a few different decorations. And I think it's just like a nice kid's room. Honestly, you could have any kid in here with any personality. And so I actually end up really liking it. Usually I try to do like themes for my kid's rooms, like a space theme or animal theme or, you know, whatever the case may be. But this one's just like a general kid's room, which I really like. But um, over here is going to be the parents' bedroom. So their room is long and narrow, which usually I hate to decorate long and narrow rooms. I find them so awkward, but I actually end up really liking the way this room turned out. I think it's really pretty. And I end up using this dresser that came from Snowy Escape. Now it's blocking the window, which would normally bother me quite a bit. But for some reason, once I placed it, it didn't bother me at all. And I actually thought it looked really nice there. So I was actually pretty happy with it and really happy with the way that room came together. It came together really quickly. I did forget a laundry hamper though. So um, I did place one. I don't think you'll see it in the screenshots. Yeah, I don't think so. 
can't remember at the moment, but it'll be there when you download it. Um, but here I'm quickly decorating uh, the balcony with a few decorations. There's a chess table out there, so the Sims have an activity to do, but other than that, it's just a nice little decorative balcony. Um, but over here is going to be the garden shed, I'm gonna call it, but it's like a laundry shed. <laughs> so there's the washer and dryer in here. There's some laundry storage and clutter, which I think looks really nice, but I also end up placing the flower arranging table. And I think that looks really nice in here and it makes the shed a little bit more functional so you're not just doing laundry. And then here I'm using these ceiling curtains that came from Snowy Escape and I think they look really nice in here. I'm actually really happy with the way they turned out. Um, and I think they were better than the other options I was trying to use. But here you can see I'm placing some plant decorations. I'm also using that shelf that came from Cottage Living. I'm obsessed with this shelf. It's one of my favorite objects that came in that pack. It is so cute and I just, I don't know, I, I wanna use it in like every single build now and I probably will. But over here is going to be the shed by the little cow house. And something you guys are probably wondering about the cow, they stand in there while they're asleep. At first my cow disappeared, but then I, I think I moved the shed or something. And then every time they were sleeping after that, they just stood in there. Their eyes didn't close, but they just stand in there. So they don't disappear, which is really nice. I mean, if they do disappear, then just move the shed slightly and they should reappear. <laughs> but um, anyways, yeah, in here I have the woodworking table, some just general clutter that I thought kind of made sense. I was trying to make this look like just storage basically, so it's not as functional as the laundry shed, but I mean, there is the woodworking table, so that does make it a little bit more functional. And then I decided to use these base game cabinets to look like more storage, and I think that looks all right. Um, and yeah, I think this just turns out to be super cute, and I'm hoping you guys are going to like this build as much as I have, because this is honestly one of my favorite builds I've ever done, and I've been so excited to share it with you guys. But anyways, I'm just adding the final few details, and then we'll be going on to the screenshots. So yeah, like I mentioned, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I hope you guys enjoy the screenshots. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and please leave any comments or suggestions you have, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!